Caitlin Hayes, how has things? How has it been playing with Ireland? <laughs> Fantastic, uh, for lack of better words. Um, still got slight imposter syndrome that I'm even here, but uh, yeah, just continuing to grow and continuing to enjoy the environment. And it's your granddad and Offaly, that's how you were eligible to play. Tell us how it all came about and when you made the decision to join. Um, so I'd been patiently waiting for about four years. Um, my family, friends, coaching staff at Celtic were all like, don't worry, it'll come, it'll come. And, and there was days where I didn't think it would. Um, and probably a little sense of me gave up on it ever so slightly. Um, just obviously with, there's only so long you can be patient after waiting yeah. four years and declaring that you're Irish. Um, but thankfully, one day woke up and Eileen Gleeson was on the end of the phone um, and she said, I want you in. And from there, it was a massive whirlwind that I'm oh, still wow. trying to get over, over. Yeah. So it was basically waiting on the call from the Ireland setup. Is is yeah. yeah. So you'd always declared you were just waiting for the call, say, from Vera at the time for yeah. the World Cup. So you wanted, you hoped yeah. to go to the World Cup. That, just yeah. so someone wanted me to play a game of football for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing more than that. <laughs> oh, yeah, trying. Oh, that's brilliant. So it must have been a bit of a whirlwind then when you did get the call and you came straight in. Yeah, it was it was massive. Um, it was just, like I said, imposter syndrome. And I was like, are you sure you've got the right girl type of thing? <laughs> and yeah, just came in and obviously being around these players and, and being in this environment, it's something you can't not grow from and learn from mm -hmm. and, and enjoy ultimately. Um, so yeah, been doing that ever since. And what was it like to play in the Viva Stadium to score? <laughs> just, just mental. I keep saying it, but I've had dreams that have gone worse, um, and <laughs> that was just like beyond my wildest. Um, to make your debut in the Aviva, get your passport the night before, have your birthday the day before, have your parents turn up, and them not knowing that I was starting, and then they see it at the Aviva, and then just. Wow. The winning, mm. just, I, I don't, I, I struggle to sum it up because it was that, it was that type of fairy tale. Um, I it's why you play it. football. Yeah. Yeah. And then it is that thing that keeps you going and you're like waiting for that next, that next thrill and that next, next almost drug that mm. it feels like. And I don't think there'll ever be a high like that in my career again, but. All to get will. there, I just think it's incredible. So yeah, just grateful. And tell us a little bit about your journey, obviously with Celtic. Um, been there since 2020. Yeah, fourth season this year. Fourth yeah. season. Over um, 100 appearances. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. And every time I put that shirt on, I know what it means. And, and I know that it's, it expects nothing less than excellence. And, and I love playing for a club that I look down and know what the badge stands for and, and ultimately see family within it. So. Yeah, just, just love playing for the club and, and, and love putting my all out there. Did you support them when you were growing up? I remember seeing a picture of you when you were yes, smaller. Yes, <laughs> I grew up in, in, in uh, Celtic Tops and Island Tops um, <laughs> from my granddad and, and from my dad proudly. So, yeah, just know what that club means to people and, and it means the same that it does to them. It means to be the same to me as it does to them. So. Yeah, and what is it like to play in Celtic Park? <laughs> It's one thing to play in Celtic Park, it's another thing to beat the Rangers, uh, obviously, and, and we played there then and that was another career highlight that, that it doesn't get better than. So, yeah, Celtic Park is a special place and, and it's something that people dream of going to and thankfully I go there every day and, yeah, love it. It seems like the support for the men's team and the women's team, they do intertwine quite a lot and you see a lot of the men's supporters they're constantly talking about you and how you play and that must be nice to to have both you know that it's not just the men and the women's that you have the support from both yeah of course i mean towards the end of last season we we had incredible support yeah. the celtic end and the green brigade turning up and it was something that i think a lot of girls even in the english leagues over over there um admired and was almost taken back by it was it was an atmosphere that it just blew your mind. Um, it was it was hard to concentrate at times when you yeah. knew the songs that they were singing. Um, but yeah, definitely a respect over there that, that is greatly appreciated and, and an interest that just continues to grow. And at the end of the day, that's all you can ask for. Yeah, absolutely. And you love scoring goals. You love that signature header. Yes. Where did that come from? Was that always in your game? I you just small? It's just always been said that I'll head a microwave. And <laughs> <laughs> I guess I try and live by that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just, just, I don't know. It's just yeah. always been a part of my game. And I, I guess being tall, yeah, it's it almost helps. like, oh, I aim for the tall girl. Mm. So I'm like, okay, 
I know what they want here um, and hopefully on more occasions than not I'll provide but uh, yeah that's that's it good stuff and what would it mean now to be able to get six wins out of six in this Nations League campaign oh huge huge I, I know there's a lot of talk that we've already topped the group and things like that but that doesn't make these games any less more important in my opinion at the end of the day you put that shirt on and, and you give it your all and, and you want to represent it again with the highest of excellence and, and that's all that the standards the standards will be keep driven even though we're top of the league and, and that doesn't matter at the end of the day you still want those six points mm -hmm. I'll let Alana do a question Can I just ask you about the it was it was an experience that I'm probably still getting over um, my boots are still still drying um, but yeah just it was just great it was it was very different obviously going to a country like Albania and experiencing their culture and and being submerged in that it was definitely something that you learnt from as a person and then obviously going and playing in those circumstances it was something that you yet again had to learn from but from a player perspective of of staying ready um, and yeah just enjoyable um, I learned a lot so I'm grateful for it. It was very nice as well to set in Moore's camp I know you're really into the Fair Midlothian. Yes <laughs> well I bought earplugs this camp <laughs> but uh, no um, she was great she's a, a barrel of laughs and and, and and even in the dark moments of Albania when it was a little bit tight tried and tested um, she definitely put a smile on my face, so I'm grateful for that. Um, so yeah, no, she was great, um, and somebody that's doing so well for for Ireland and and been back in this camp is it's great to see her and and yeah, definitely the sunshine that Albania needed. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. And then uh, just one more for you to see with the pink headband. I was seeing on, I think it was yours from our young boy TV Celtics. You know, the, all the little kids wearing yeah. their pink headbands, oh. trying to be you. Yeah. Very cute, don't you? It is, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a daunting task sometimes. You can get overwhelmed by it because obviously you just want to be the best version of yourself so they can aim to be the best, on, if not better. And, and it's definitely a, a great honour and something I don't take lightly, but never started as something to be that. So it's, it's just incredible of how far it's come. And, and yeah. You're starting the trend. Yeah. yeah, pink pre-wrap. <laughs> <laughs> what a trend. <laughs> Could have been a good pair of shoes or something like that, couldn't it? But no, we're doing the pink pre-wrap, so yeah, no. It's a great honour and it's something I don't take lightly and, and just hope to do them proud and that's all I can ask for.